Have you heard the phrase, debt is the root of all evils, never get into debt, debt is slavery. And that is true to a certain extent, because when you're drowning in debt, your life is over. While you're trying to pay your debts, your debts are not waiting for you. They're growing day by day, since no one lends money for free, there is always an interest. Despite all of this, the United States has embraced debt. Total US consumer debt is almost $15 trillion, which brings the average household debt to over $5,300. The US GDP is a little over $21 trillion, which means the entire economy consists out of debt. But I have some good news for you. That isn't always bad. That is unpopular opinion because most of the debt we have is bad debt. You probably have some credit card debts, a car loan, and maybe a student debt, and you're thinking, it will take me decades to pay off all of these debts. How on earth can debt be something good? In order to understand how debt can be something positive, let's take a look at how people with deep pockets still use debt to make even more money. It might sound a bit confusing because why would anyone with a lot of money use debt in the first place? That is supposed to be used by people who do not have money, but that's not how capitalism works. That is a powerful tool if you know how to use it, and in this video, you will find out how rich people use debt to make even more money. So give this video a thumbs up and let's get right into it. Number 1. Most of the trade is based on debt. It might sound a bit controversial because borrowing money to start a business is a horrible idea, and personally, I would never do that. But there are businesses, especially traditional businesses, where using debt is your best option. Let's say you want to sell pens. It's a very common product and there's pretty much always a demand for it. Ideally, you would fly to China, find a factory that produces that kind of pen with good quality and the right price. You would purchase a container of pens, ship them to the US and distribute them to your clients. But today, that's mostly done online through websites like Alibaba, unless it's a more complicated product where you have to fly to that factory. But here is the catch. You don't really have to pay for the products to have the product first. Let me explain how. In the past 50 years, China has become the factory of the world producing literally everything. Thousands of factories work non-stop to produce everything that the world needs. And in order to make it easier to sell, most of these factories would gladly loan you their products in return that you would pay them some time in the future. Of course, they would not lend to strangers, so you will have to build some kind of trust with them first, but that's how business has been running for the past 50 years. Once the client would sell the product in the US or any other part of the world, he would pay the factory and borrow more products. You're basically telling the factory, you know how to produce it, so let me help you sell it. If I can sell it for anything above this price, that's going to be my profit. What makes this strategy great is that you're not tying up your own money in this transaction. That's why selling is one of the greatest skills you can ever master. Number 2. Refinancing Real estate debt is the best kind of debt because it's filled with loopholes. If you don't have a mortgage, then you're paying extra taxes. Rich people always have multiple mortgages to be able to get all of those deductions. Remember, every dollar that you're supposed to pay in taxes, but instead you save is an extra dollar earned. So that's another way rich people get richer. But let me give you a more practical way. This is how basically rich people get rich in real estate. Let's say you saved $200,000. That's a lot of money. But if we're going to be honest, that's peanuts. You can't even buy a house. Of course, you can't get a mortgage up to $800,000 since you have to make a 20% down payment, but here is the secret. Let's say you find a property that costs half a million dollars. It's in a bad condition and needs some or maybe a lot of renovation. You head to a bank and get a mortgage by making a 20% down payment. Let's say you're going to spend around 10% of the total cost of the house to renovate it or around $50,000. You had to your bank again, but this time to refinance your mortgage. When you got your first mortgage, 
the value of that property was just half a million dollars because it was in such a bad condition that no one wanted to live there. But since you have renovated it, now there are people who want to rent it out. So the market value of that property, let's say rises to $700,000. Like the first time, let's say you're going to get an 80% mortgage, but 80% out of $700,000 is $560,000. $400,000 out of that money is going to go to your first bank that gave you the first mortgage. And let's deduct another $50,000 that you spent on renovation and you're going to be left with an extra profit of $110,000. You made $110,000 using debt and you're left with a property that you can rent out to build equity and generate passive income. On top of that, you're going to avoid paying taxes because you have a mortgage. This is a very common practice among real estate investors. Can you really say after this that that is bad? I will leave that for you to answer in the comment section below. Number 3. Hedge Funds Hedge funds are made by the rich for the rich to make rich people richer, and they usually use unpopular strategies. Mortal people like me and you, we make our best efforts to predict which companies are going to grow and rise in value and invest the money we worked so hard to earn in hopes for these companies to grow. But hedge funds often use a completely opposite strategy. They try to make money when companies fall or go bankrupt, as it was with the case of GameStop. Although in that case, the internet challenged hedge funds and pushed them to lose over $13 billion. But how do hedge funds make money with debt? Let's say you expect a certain stock to decline like Facebook because you know that Apple, who produces the most popular smartphone, will announce next week that they will no longer let apps to track you like Facebook or Instagram track your online activity and make privacy their first priority which will greatly damage Facebook's business model. So you pick up your phone and call your broker to borrow from him a single Facebook stock that costs, let's say, $100 and instantly sell it in the open market for $100. Congrats, now you have $100 in your pocket, but you still owe your broker one Facebook stock. Let's say you are right and next week Facebook stock price drops to $70. You use that $100 to buy one Facebook stock for $70 since the price dropped and return it to your broker and pocket the difference. Congrats, you've made $30 out of a fall of a stock. It sounds simple in theory, but it's extremely difficult and risky in practice. What happens if you're wrong? What if the price doubles overnight? You still have to return that single Facebook stock to your broker and pay interest for borrowing that stock. Now you have to buy that stock back for $200 to return it to your broker. When you buy a stock and try to sell it when it rises, the maximum that you can lose is the amount you invested in, but not in the case of shorting. If the price keeps rising, your losses keep rising. Theoretically, you can make unlimited losses since theoretically the stock price can rise indefinitely. But if you have a 100 analysts working for you, you can make a fortune using this strategy. Number 4. Forex We have already discussed this in our Forex video, which link I will leave in the comment section, but here is how it works in short. Forex is a market where currencies are traded. It makes international trade possible. You can use US dollar in China. You have to buy Chinese yen to pay your employees, for example, in China. So, there is a market where anyone or any company can come in and purchase foreign currencies. And based on different factors, these currencies fluctuate. For example, the Fed rises interest rates that will limit the supply of dollar in the market and make US dollar stronger against other currencies, or vice versa. So if you can predict which currencies will rise or fall, you can make a lot of money in this market. But what makes these markets so different from the rest is that for every dollar you use to trade in Forex, you can borrow an additional $100. That means if you trade using your $1000, you can hold a position worth $100,000. If you end up making a small profit like 1%, it will be huge. Number 5. Credit Score As you can see, debt is a powerful tool. 
Every successful business, company or entrepreneur uses debt in various ways, especially if you have a proven business model. Borrowing money to finance purchase orders is practiced pretty much by every business. So stop thinking in terms, all debt is bad. Of course, debt with a high interest rate such as credit card debt is horrible. But in order to get a lower interest rate, you have to minimize the risks of loaning you money. How do you do that? You build a track record of being a reliable borrower. There are billions if not trillions of dollars in the banks waiting for someone to borrow them. And even if there isn't any money, banks can create money out of thin air. And we have explained that in a previous video. Anyways, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you are new around here, subscribe and turn on your notifications. You're welcome to the channel where you will learn everything there is to know about money, investing and the stock market. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.